We are lucky enough today to be spending 22 minutes with Julian Lennon, musician, philanthropist, author it, yes, indeed. of this beautiful children's Thank book you. called Touch the Earth. And um, you're going to be signing just a few of these in town this week, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, today, this afternoon, about 1500 I believe so uh, yeah that'll be interesting uh, uh, the ice it will be needed mm -hmm. for the wrist after that <laughs> but uh, yeah I, you know happy to do it but it's it's certainly a, a lot yeah. of a lot of books a lot it. of books yeah I saw a picture of, uh, of of the office where they're stored and it's basically a wall um, uh, this will probably be the last time I'll ever want to see this book, but no. <laughs> I mean, you know. That's a lot of books. And I should yeah. mention you're also going to be at the Barnes & Noble in Union Square. That's correct. Saturday, yeah. yes. 11 o'clock. Yes, signing, signing yeah. some more books. Our, yes. ne our neck of the woods. I've got to learn to write with my other hand. <laughs> I think you better. Yeah. You can do some exercises while we talk. Indeed. Um, the book is beautiful. Thank Wh you. Why did you decide to do a children's book? Well, the, the main reason being is that, you know, I'd... Uh, musically, I'd written uh, songs, environmental, humanitarian or, uh, orientated, and, I, and I also, you know, um, uh, had done quite a few independent uh, documentaries mm -hmm. on uh, the same subjects. And and I was I was actually talking to a dear friend of mine, in fact, Bart, the co-writer here, mm -hmm. who uh, because I wanted to do a biography because uh, I thought it was about time before it's too late before. I pop my clogs or before my friends pop my their clogs and um, we, we just started talking about all the projects that I've been involved with and also my foundation the White Feather Foundation right. and he, he just remarked that, um, that the one thing that I hadn't really done is you know approach children and uh, with the idea of you know what's wrong with our planet and right. you know clean water and dirty water and this that and the other and and, and I thought you know you're right you're right um, so we, we spent the last year mulling over it, uh, uh, the concepts, um, because there's three of the books. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a trilogy. So, uh, uh, you know, and it was quite a difficult thing to do because, uh, as I've said on a few occasions, you know, every word is loaded. You have to be very careful about right. what you're saying and you have to be able to deliver the message in such a way that, you know, young minds will understand Right. So this is not only a lovely story and a picture book, but they're they're being educated about morals and the rights and wrongs in life. And, right, uh, and and kids will read a children's book again. Oh yes, and again. Yeah, and again. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, you know, it was extremely important to 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 get that right. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and I, I think I think we have. Um, but you know, this is this is my my dipping my toe into the water mm -hmm. of this arena. But I've enjoyed it very very much yeah. and. Uh, I think for me, this is, you know, probably just the beginning. Yeah, you ask the kids to push, push a button. Yeah, kids I mean, love pushing yeah, buttons. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's obviously <laughs> it's um, it's interactive to a degree, but it's it's old school. Yeah. Uh, because th part of the reason behind this was that I just remembered some of the most loving moments of of, of, of being a young child was was uh, either at nap time or bedtime where it's storytelling time mm -hmm. and whether it was my mum or, or my grandmother you know reading books to me and you know you get excited and you you want to you know engross yourself in the story and the adventure yeah. uh, and it's it's also you know I felt it was a very important bonding moment and nurturing moment between you know child and parent and I, I thought well if you can take that and uh, educate in the in the in this uh, in that in within that process then that's a great thing, right? Um, and so that's where how it all came about, you know. And you ask kids to get on the white feather flyer, yeah. the name of the name of your foundation as well. Where did that name come from? The White Feather Foundation. It came from uh, something that happened to me over twenty years ago. I was I was in Australia on tour um, with. Uh, my one of my environmental songs called Saltwater, which was number mm -hmm. one over there at the time. Um, it's a beautiful song. Thank you. Beautiful uh, companion piece, yeah, really, well, for this. Well, yeah. ex exactly. And uh, I was staying in a hotel in Adelaide, and I got a, a phone call from the management of the hotel saying, uh, Mr. Lennon, uh, yes, excuse me, but we have uh, 
you know, about 20 or 30 people down in the lobby here with TV crews, uh, Aboriginal tribe, and, you know, they want to speak to you. And I, I said, you're joking, right? And they said, no, 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 no. Can you please come down and uh, sort of address the situation? And I said, uh, okay. Um, so I went downstairs, and there was a big gathering. And this elderly woman came up to me with uh, a male white swan's feather. Um, and the precursor to this is that Dad said that if something ever happened to him, that, that, that to, to let me know that he's okay or we're going to be okay, it would be in the form of a white feather. So when I was presented the white feather by uh, an indigenous elder of, 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 of this tribe called the Murning, the Murning people, the Murning tribe, and they, you know, she said, listen, you, you have a voice, can you help us? And it really was that sort of moment, I mean, talk about goosebumps, you know, um, and it was that sort of moment, well, you know, do, do I continue playing the rock and roll star or do I actually step up to the plate? Right. So I spent 10 years making a documentary about this tribe and I thought, well, you know, if we do well in any way, uh, we won several awards for it, so I was happy about that because it got recognition. Yeah. But I said, you know, if we make any money on this, I want it to go back to the tribe. How do I do that? And literally the only way to achieve that at that point in time so that the money went clear to them without the government or anybody else stealing it from them was to do it through a foundation. Mm -hmm. So initially the White Feather Foundation was just a vehicle to you know, get the money through to them so that they can continue and prosper with their life and their culture. Right. Um, and then, uh, you know, I, eventually I built a website and, and, uh, and then I started getting requests. Uh, you know, can you help us with this? Can you help us? And, and I'm thinking, well, I'm not really a foundation as such. Uh, but then I started looking at all the, the, the requests and I got, what happened was I, I was invited to go to Ethiopia with the, the founder of this organization called Charity Water to uh, go and look at how they lived out there, uh, you know, with, with the water, dirty water situation. And his organization, you know, raised money and donations to build wells, you know, mm -hmm. drill wells. And so I went on that journey with him. And at the same time, I went to Kenya, uh, went to all, all different kinds of schools for the uh, Millennium Project. And... Uh, and you know, was look, we were looking at health and education and safety and uh, and uh, schools and you know potentially rebuilding or helping build dormitories uh, because w w you know after sitting with the girls from these schools, we you know finding out that they were literally uh, traveling six hours to go mm -hmm. to go to school every day. They go to school and then they'd walk six hours back at night. A lot of them being raped and killed. Uh, and literally the girls in the school had turned one of their classrooms into a dormitory so that they could stay at school and educate themselves because they, they wanted to help their own communities, they wanted mm -hmm. to become doctors and lawyers and also, you know, uh, uh, spread the word about, uh, 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 about their community and their culture. And so it was, you know, it was amazing to hear all these stories and, uh, and you know, Heartfelt. I mean, you you mm -hmm. can't ignore what you know some unfortunate people have to go through. You know, in 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 that kind of climate, and so due to all of this, you know, uh, I you know I've now embarked on any number of campaigns to do what I can when I can right. with uh, with with with, uh, with the White Feather Foundation and we're literally based on donations right. you know we do what we can and everything that I do whether it's music or photography or this you know uh, you know proportion goes to the White Feather Foundation so that we can continue doing the work that we do yeah about about your music mm. you uh, really kind of burst onto the scene in the 80s a gorgeous album Velod. Yes. Went Thank platinum. You. Grammy Appa apparently. nomination. <laughs> that had to be a crazy time in your life. Was what kind of pressure was it for you then to to make music and and to be original? Well, I, I mean, I mean, there was no pressure. Uh, it was something that just felt like the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, 
Were you uh, self-taught musician? Yeah, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Uh, <laughs> um, That's <laughs> one way of putting it. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I, I do. I do recall having a piano lesson. Uh, I mean, there were a few lessons here and there, but I, I had a piano lesson with a, a, an old uh, lady in uh, the school. And, uh, you know, if you hit the wrong note on the piano, she would whack your hand with a wooden ruler. And I'm going, this is no way to learn music. This is, this is wrong. But then in another school, there was a gymnastics teacher um, called uh, Mr. Wynn, who had one of those uh, traditional uh, DA haircuts, a grease back. Um, <laughs> And uh, he uh, was uh, an absolute lover of rock and roll. So in his spare time, uh, he used to teach uh, a few of us, you know, traditional rock and roll songs like mm. Roll Over Beethoven, a lot of Chuck Berry stuff, right. uh, yeah. who I eventually ended up singing that with, 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 right. uh, with Chuck. At one of his uh, birthdays. Uh, birthday well, it was uh, Hail, Hail Rock and Roll. Yeah. It was a, f a yeah. film being made about him. And so, uh, I mean, to be in school learning that and then to be on stage in St. Louis, you know, uh, right. playing with him was quite unexpected, to say the least. Yeah. And that was at a young age, too. It was all a bit of a shock, but I didn't know, to be honest with you, w how you were supposed to feel growing up at any given point of age or time, you know. Yeah. Um, so I, it was, for me, it was very much go with the flow, see what happens. Just make but your music. It, just get on with it and, mm -hmm. and, and deal with the consequences. Um, <laughs> um, but uh, it, it was an enjoyable time, but uh, in, it was quite scary as well. But I mean, I only had a, with the first al album, a glimpse of what f fame and celebrity was about. And you know, the, uh, I mean, literally coming out of the hotel and there'd be several thousand kids there screaming and ripping your hair and clothes. And, right. I, uh, and that freaked me out. That really scared me a little bit. You did, know? It, did it make you think of what your father had had gone sure, through. Sure, sure. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, that was just a, a, a yeah. glimmer of what they went through, and uh, you know, and even what I see friends uh, like the boys in U two and other people that you just, they you know their life is really under a microscope and they right. can't do anything. Right. And I, I'm I feel so f blessed and fortunate that I I'm in a position where I am recognised and I, I do I'm able to do what I, I do. But I can also, you know, quite easily, you know, uh, in the little town near where I live, you know, I know the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, <laughs> and I, you know, and I, I can walk around, I can go, I'm under the radar, and I can still enjoy some of the limelight and aspects of that, but also uh, remain private and have a life outside of that madness, and it's... It's an extraordinary position to be, be how, in, that balance as well. How about when you come to New York? Do, do people approach you on the street? I think I'm probably recognized here more than anywhere else mm -hmm. in the world. Maybe London too. Yeah. Uh, but what do people say when they but generally, it's, you. it's always a warm, hey, Julian. You know, yeah. so it's that kind of, oh, and, uh, <laughs> and hey. And so it's, 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 it's never nothing been. Anno nothing annoying or. Uh, no, no, it's never it's, been, it's never, ever been uncomfortable. Never. It's always been, you know, warm hearted, uh, polite, and, you know, just a pleasure, you know. Yeah. Now, when you come to New York, I, I have to ask, do you see. Sean, do you spend any time with him? We were we spent the evening together last night. Did you? Uh, it was probably we spent probably more time together last night, a few hours just talking about life, love, and everything else than I've spent I I in years. Is he a good friend him. to you? Uh, you know, he's since you know he was born he was you know that he was blood to me that's my little brother there mm -hmm. and I always felt uh, a sort of a position in a position of nurturing uh, you know so not a dad position but certainly an older brother position and mm -hmm. always wanted to try and steer him in the right direction or at least give him the show him the options and the choices that uh, are available to him to to make those uh, the right decisions in life but i think considering what you know I, I i you know i had pretty difficult time growing up and i think he's probably had it just as difficult if not more difficult because not only did he have dad but you know when i was in the limelight too that was two people he was being compared right to um but I think he's 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 tremendous. I think he's grown up incredibly well. He's uh, 
He's intelligent, wise, funny as hell. Um, and uh, we have nothing but uh, admiration and love for each other. And I, you know, I reckon down the road we'll probably do a little bit of work together. You know. What might you do together? Uh, you know, whether it's uh, we might do a bit of recording together down the road. You know, but I think for us more than anybody else, you know, because uh, one of the, you know I, one of the first things I did with him when he was you know sort of eleven, I think, or around that time frame, was you know teach him a little bit about how to play guitar and. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, you know, there's, uh, I think it'd be good to go back to that and, uh, uh, and whether, whether, whether we do, you know, we've talked about doing some covers, not Beatles, because uh, it was al already done perfectly then, don't need to touch that. <laughs> but there are, there, I agree with you about but, Beatles covers. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, but there are, you know, there are other great, great artists from that era, uh, era if not before, that we, we, had, we both admire greatly. So we're talking about potentially doing a few things, but we also may do a little writing together. But again, initially just for us, you mm -hmm. know, just for the pleasure and, uh, and joy of it. And what about the man who so famously wrote that song for you. Mm. You in touch with him at all? Which, uh, uh, Paul. Oh, that guy. <laughs> oh. uh, yeah, he's in the Rolodex somewhere. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, we, we catch up every once in a blue moon, you know. Uh, He's always, I mean, he never stops touring. I, you know, I couldn't do it, but... Um, no, he's still out there all the time. Uh, yeah, yeah. He, he, uh, uh, that's one way of saying it. No, I didn't mean that. Uh, uh, in the nicest possible way. Um, yeah, no, we, we, we cross paths every once in a while, and when we do, we try and get together. Um, uh, but again, it's, you know, when you're doing that all the time, yeah. it's, it's not always easy. But, you know, of course, there's great appreciation for that song. Yeah. I mean, it drives me nuts now <laughs> every time I hear it. But it's, you know, one, one can't uh, be floored by the fact that he wrote that, you know, and was thinking about me at, at that particular time. And at that um, time... It, I guess it was meant to console you in a yeah. sense, did it? Did, were you aware of it? You were just a little oh, boy Yeah, then. no, I wasn't yeah. aware of yeah. it at that time. Um, uh, yeah, no, it's probably more appreciated now, really, in retrospect. Yeah. You know, uh, I, you know, I do love the song, How Can, you, how can I Not, you know. Yeah. Um, you have spent some time and some money buying back some of your father's precious Indeed. items. Yeah. Even had a book about it, right? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I put a memorabilia book about yeah. the, the, the collection that I've slowly been growing over the years. Uh, and we have, we have actually, uh, um, we've, we've done a few events where we've shown, you know, shown all the memorabilia. Is there and a favorite, a favorite item that you have among, I've, re I've read a a little bit of a, a list of some of the things. Yeah, on it, dif difficult. <clears throat> um, well, it, you know, his his kind of Afghan coat from the Walrus period is pretty special. Uh, mm -hmm. Probably the guitar that he gave me on my first electric guitar at the age for my eleventh birthday. That was pretty special. I mean, that kind of started me off really on on that road. Mm -hmm. um, uh, another thing, which is a kooky one, would be the sort of little monkey bike that he had when we lived in Weybridge, Surrey, and Ringo used to live down the road. And so uh, I used to be hang on for dear life uh, on this little monkey bike going to visit Ringo. And w uh, I, we managed to find it. And it was, you know, uh, a little rusty, but we cleaned it up. But, but that's part of the, the exhibition too, and, uh, you know, part of the collection. What a great and thing to have. Yeah, it's just, uh, I, I think that's probably what turned me onto motorcycles, mm. which I'm an avid fan of, so. Your photography, any yes. upcoming exhibit of um, your work? I did, I, I, mm. I did, I uh, did, I'm uh, very happy about this. I I managed to uh, build a relationship with uh, Leica, who uh, Leica cameras, mm -hmm. and uh, and they uh, enabled me to have uh, an exhibition at their at their uh, uh, gallery space in Los Angeles, um, which was really really quite mm -hmm. special and. We both enjoyed the show so well that we're now touring that exhibition around the world in uh, at their other galleries. Okay. So is this the one that has some of the pictures from that you took of you too, or is this no, a different? No, th this 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 was actually um, 
uh, about this time, uh, a year ago, in fact, in fact, it was, um, I was invited out of the blue, which was extraordinary, on a boat trip around the South China Seas. And, uh, and I, it was, you know, it was a, uh, the anniversary of my mother's passing, first year, and it was also my birthday time. And I was thinking, well, yeah, what am I going to do? Sit around being miserable? That's not what, what I want, and it's certainly not what mum would have wanted. So uh, I, I, I just said, all right, I'll do it. And so I bought, because I'd, I'd been offered this exhibition with Leica, I bought a Leica camera and I disappeared for 10 days uh, and traveled to the, the South China Seas. And the exhibition is called Cycle and it's about the lifestyle of, uh, and lives of the people that uh, live on the borders of uh, the South China Sea, Malaysia, Vietnam, Brunei, mm -hmm. uh, Kuching and many more. Um, and it was an extraordinary experience, one I'll never forget. And especially because it's captured within this exhibition. Yeah. Um, and I took, I didn't know what the exhibition was gonna be so I took pictures galore, uh, ended up with about 5,700 oh pictures, <laughs> with, with a deadline to have an exhibition ready within three months. And uh, let me tell you, that was, you want to know what stress is, that was stress. <laughs> uh, I had to narrow it down to 50 images. And so, anyway, that uh, uh, exhibition is now touring around the world. It's in Sao Paulo at the end of this month. Three, ex three galleries in Japan in June for a couple of months. Uh, we're talking Prague, Salzburg, Boston. Wow. Uh, it would be nice to bring it here at some point. I was going to say, um, please come to New York. Uh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and aside from that, I just work on editing uh, other collections and projects all the time. Yeah. Um, the Back to Touch the Earth. Sure. And there's a beautiful, I, I want to make sure I get the, uh, the wording right, a beautiful dedication to your mom. You mentioned oh, yes, her passing. Yeah, yes, yeah. Uh, basically saying to mom, yep. who gave me the vision to fly without wings. Yes, indeed. She taught you to be gracious, I've heard you say. Yeah, well, I, I think it was about making mum proud. <laughs> that was... Uh, Every mum wants to hear that. Yes, <laughs> and, and, and from the get-go, that was yeah. number one on my list, you know, in everything I did. Yeah. In every way, shape, or form, I was about making her proud yeah. um, and supporting her and taking care of her and looking after her in every way, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, and I think she'd be very happy about it, you know. I imagine yeah. she supported all your philanthropic yeah. efforts and very musical... Much so. uh, very much so. Very much so. And we, in fact, the White Feather Foundation, mm -hmm. in her honor, uh, we... we we have a scholarship for girls, you know, we, we, uh, we put them through college um, uh, from different parts of Africa and around the world. We're, 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 we're trying to do more and more every year mm -hmm. in her name, so it's, uh, you know, it's good to keep that alive. Too. She was an art school yeah. student yeah, yeah. back when. Yeah, I should have been so drawing you had this, really. You, would, you had jeans <laughs> maybe on both I'll, sides. I'll, maybe I'll be drawing the next one. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I have one last question yes, for you, sure, Julian. Sure. I, I could absolutely use another 22 minutes. Absolutely. If you could spend 22 minutes with someone, oh, anyone. Oh, jeez. Who would it be? Oh. The dreaded, the dreaded wow. interview question that puts you wow. on, the, on the spot. Wow, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Oh, that's... See, there's too many. Uh, but I'd, I'd probably have to say Dad. Uh, uh, to, to know him as an adult, you know, uh, would, 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 would be a quite special thing. You know. uh, but, you know, who knows? That may happen one day. Is there something you'd want to ask him in particular? No, oh, I just, you know, want to talk to him about being an adult and how he dealt with it all and how, you know, uh, we remain sane within it. Yeah. You know, that's, that's, that's the one thing, you know. Uh, uh, yeah. And used your uh, fame for wonderful causes, including Plastic Oceans Foundation, White yes. Feather Foundation, and this book, Touch the Earth, which is beautiful. Thank and you. I think your hand is going to be even more sore than you expect. <laughs> You're going to have a lot of people wanting, wanting your signature on this. Julian well, Lennon, thank you so oh, much for coming pleasure. in. My absolute pleasure. My absolute pleasure.